Bill, it's great to have you back on this month to hear about the future of ethics and corporate sustainability in retail. Today, we're going to be looking at the most recent theme. But first, Bill, why don't you just introduce yourself briefly for uh, any new listeners we might have? Yeah, it's great to be back, Tom. And I have been running this discovery board for Accenture uh, with quite a bit of experience running and facilitating these kinds of engagements as a co-founder of Convetted. Focus on online engagement is really a specialty of mine, as well as corporate sustainability. I wrote the first sustainability for Walmart about a decade ago and have been deeply engaged in the field ever since then. So this is a great dialogue looking at some of the issues of sustainability and ethics as they apply to the retail setting. And in this particular theme, Bill, it sounded like you guys took the angle or the focus around environmental position. Tell me a little bit more about what that theme entails. We started off with a theme last time looking at the product creation. This was opening up to look not just upstream at the factories and and such, but really looking at the whole value chain and particularly looking at environmental impacts and opportunities to enhance the sustainability of the entire retail experience. So looking at the production, the transport, the in-store experience or the purchase experience, all the way down to the use of the product. It's been an excellent panel so far. In particular, we've had some great input from Bill Roth, who's the founder of Earth 2017, and Lise Lauren, uh, the CEO of Earthshift, as well as Joss Tantrum and Maria Leo. Several of these folks are uh, people that I've engaged with in the past, and so I really know and value their experience and and others I'm getting to know in this board, which is one of the uh, pleasures of doing Convetit engagements. One of the big things that we looked at was when approaching this from the entire value chain, one of the things that we noticed was a kind of reverse Pareto effect, where 80% of the impact is actually outside of the direct control of management, whereas management is really focusing most of their effort on that uh, 20% of the impact. So the suggestion really was a need to flip that on its head and focus more on the upstream and downstream uh, variables, which are outside of direct control, but within influence range. The other strong theme that emerged was a kind of future orientation, and that took two forms. One was a focus on the millennials and their influence on uh, retail going forward, that really there are trends that are starting to emerge now, for example, in terms of millennials settling into their own homes, as well as technological developments. Obviously, we know that retail is migrating online, but the advent of 3D printing and and other developments technologically are really disrupting current retail business models. Key point one, you're talking about the impact of value chains. Touched on that already in terms of this 80-20 rule, as they say, the takeaway there was really to focus less on the direct control, obviously not dropping the ball on that front, but really to shift management's focus into their areas of influence where you can influence consumer behavior, for example, looking at how Patagonia is asking its consumers to consider not buying (laughs) one of their products new, instead taking care of it so that it lasts longer. For Patagonia, it's resulted in more brand stickiness. There was a thread that was specifically on retail establishments of the future, essentially where the retail experience would be moved away from a bricks and mortar setting and more into a virtual online setting. The question mark is whether this essentially increases the overall environmental footprint or whether that kind of aggregating and customizing would actually reduce the environmental footprint.
The other area that we've been focusing on there in terms of the value chain impacts is focusing on technologies that can help transform those impacts. So for example, 3D printing was a significant focus of conversation. UV Bandari noted that the fashion industry is moving away from the fashion that's created in factories throughout the world towards the 3D printing that's uh, customized to individuals' own measurements. There was that angle, but there was also a, a countervailing input pointing out that, you know, 3D printers are great, but that's still a long way off until these are in every home. Really, the transition is going to be a kind of Kinko's concept where you know we go to uh, an outlet that has a number of different 3D printers, one for metal, one for plastics, one for glass, et cetera. And then we have experts do the actual printing. So there's really kind of a stepping stone approach. Really online versus bricks and mortar was its own focal point of conversation. It really started out with Bruce Clafter asking whether it's preferable to have outlets in every mall in America or whether online shopping is environmentally preferable way of, of distributing merchandise. This got down into the details of looking at LCAs or life cycle assessment. It also looked at the interaction between environmental benefit and social benefit. So Lee's Lauren in particular pointed out that yeah, perhaps we might be able to generate some incremental environmental progress, but what's the impact on local business, for example? What's the impact on workers throughout the value chain, et cetera? There was a thread that focused on the question of culture versus compliance, and it really pointed out by David Feidner that RILA, the retail association, looks at sustainability more from a compliance perspective. Josh Tantrum also pointed out that this cultural shift really needs to happen around sustainable choices that consumers make and those becoming the norm, not the exception as they are right now. This is obviously something that will take a long time for that cultural change to happen but it's something that we're already beginning to see. The key point number six had to do with recycling and particularly upcycling where you're improving the materials in the process or downcycling where you're, there's a necessary degrade in the materials as they are reused. Bruce Clafter again was really key here where he pointed out that we are downcycling a lot of materials that are ending up in the landfill and we have not been achieving that holy grail, if you will, of a truly circular economy. Bill Roth weighed in here with noting that there's a real connection here between price and environmental cost. Bill, thanks for taking us through the theme. Often we wonder how this is impacting the overarching direction of uh, the panel. Here I noticed in your map you've asked what are the most significant barriers in moving toward ethical retail ethical encompassing, I imagine, sustainable and ethical retail. But how has this past two weeks discussion impacted your view of this map or that of the panel? I think what we're seeing in the map is the whole question of economics compared to environment or ethics being right now, they're kind of pitted against one another. And a lot of the conversation in the board is questioning how we can flip that equation. Really what we're struggling with identifying are ways to create greater alignment between profit, people, and planet. The other thing that I would say around this particular priority map is that I just recently added some of the topics that were really quite hot in the, the main discussion space. So for example, bricks and mortar as compared to online was really quite a strong topic of conversation. It's showing on the lower side here, 
But I think that that's something that will change uh, as the board continues to move on. Bill, you certainly covered a lot in this panel so far. Any idea where you're going next? Uh, what is the next theme? It's the shift from the environmental focus to the social focus. So that's the next theme that we're going to be opening up. And, you know, not that we will completely disregard the environmental impacts, but really the, the, the focus will be on the social impacts around workers, around uh, local economies and human rights support throughout the, the value chain. And then finally, Bill, thanks for your efforts over the past couple of weeks. Look forward to reconnecting in a few. That sounds great, Tom. I look forward to it, too.